After spending your whole day on TikTok watching fan edits again, you finally want to create one for yourself. Maybe you can finally go viral, gain followers and make your family proud. Yes, this sounds awesome. But huh? wait, I don't have a clue on how to make an edit. If only there was someone who could help me. If you finally want to create an edit that doesn't make you seem like you edit on CapCut, don't worry because today we'll show you step by step everything you need to know and how you can make one in After Effects. Once you open up After Effects, you will most likely be faced with this window. And the first thing we want to create is a new composition. So just click on that button. And once that's done, this window should open up. Now the most things in here we can completely disregard, but some settings we have to adjust. For example, the width and height, because they are later going to determine which resolution our edit has. I want to upload my edit to TikTok, so I'm going to use a format that suits TikTok. In my case, I like to use 1170 by 1560, but alternatively, you can always use different resolutions such as 1080 by 1450, 1080 by 1080, or 1080 by 1920. This is completely up to you, and once that's done, you want to make sure to put the frame rate to 60. This will just determine the frame rate our edit later on is going to have. And from my experience, 60 always looks the smoothest and best, so I'm gonna put in 60. Last but not least, we're gonna put the duration of our edit, meaning how long your edit is gonna be. Don't worry if you don't exactly know how long your edit is gonna be, you can always change all these settings later on. For now, I'm just gonna put in 30 seconds, and once that's done, press OK. Now, as you can see, this already looks a lot more like editing. And as I said, if you later on wanna change these settings we just put, just right click onto your preview, go to composition settings, and there you have them. Now, obviously, the first thing we have to do is add our footage and sound, because otherwise we don't have anything to edit with. So we're gonna go ahead to the top, select file, go to import, select file, and then on your computer, choose from where you want to import your footage. In my case, I already prepared the scene pack and sound, so I'm just going to select both of them and press import. This might take a few seconds, and now under your project panel, you can see that you have your sound and your mp4 data, which in my case is going to be a scene pack. Now go ahead and drag both of them onto your timeline, which is right here, and now you can already preview your footage. Now as you might notice, below and on top of my footage, there are these black bars, and obviously we don't want them to be in our final edit, so the first thing we're going to do is click onto our footage, which is the top layer, press S on our keyboard to bring up the scaling and I'll increase or decrease the value so it fits our composition. In my case, I have to increase the value and just like this, it looks perfect and fills out the whole screen. Now next, we're gonna go ahead and search out our intro clip. I know a lot of you guys struggle with this step, but don't worry, I will guide you through it. Start by double clicking onto your footage and as you can see, it opens up a new layer preview where you now have a mini timeline that's responsible for your clip, meaning you can preview the whole footage you have put in here. And in my case, I wanna make an edit of Joe Mama. Now to choose a clip from here, we're gonna go to the time marker that we can see on our mini timeline. That's right below our footage right here. And now we're just gonna drag that ahead on our timeline and as you can see it moves through the footage. Now just scroll to the footage till you find your intro clip. And now once you found the clip you want to choose for your intro, you can see this little two brackets that we have right here. And by clicking this first one we can see we're just gonna set the time where our clip starts at that certain point where we are with our marker. I know this sounds confusing but just watch. But as you can see we have our time indicator back on our timeline so we can now go ahead and drag this throughout the whole intro and wherever you want your intro to end, we're just gonna go to that point in time and cut your clip by pressing control shift and D at the same time on your keyboard. And as you can see, this first clip is now completely isolated and there you have your intro. To now go back to your actual preview, just click this little button that says composition at the top. Now you might have to do some personalized adjustments to the intro length, but that's completely up to what edit you want to do. Okay, so now once you adjusted the intro to the way you want to have it, the next step is going to be marking our beat drops. Why we do that is pretty simple because obviously we want our clips to change and to match it exactly with the sound, we're going to mark the beat drops and every time the beat drops, we're going to change our clip. Makes sense, right? So to do that, we're just going to go ahead Ahead. We can delete this excess part of the scene pack that we still have left from the intro if you didn't already. And then we're gonna actually disable the audio from the intro. So just click this little speaker. And you should now only hear your sound when playing your preview. And now to mark the beats, there's a pretty simple technique. Just right click onto your sound, go to keyframe assistant, click convert audio into keyframes. And as you can see, you now have a whole new layer. Just click onto the layer and press U to bring up the keyframes. Once you see all the keyframes, select the one that says both channels and open the graph editor. Now, if you're met with this graph, totally fine. Just zoom in a bit and you can see now every time there's a spike, we have a beat drop. This way, it's a bit easier to mark all of them. So now you can just go ahead, listen to the audio, and every time you see a spy, head to the right side, go to this marker symbol, and once you click on that, in that exact time and place, there's gonna be a numbered marker on your timeline, which you can later on use as orientation to indicate where our beat drops. So now just go ahead and do this for all the beat drops you have in your audio. And once you've done this, your timeline should look something like this, and we can now go ahead and close our graph editor again. Also, delete this excess layer because we're not gonna need it anymore. Now, obviously, we're also gonna need clips that we can change in between. So go ahead and drag your simple back onto your timeline. As you can see, I made it start for the second marker because the first one is going to be the same clip from the intro. So like before, just put the scaling back up so all the black bars are gone. And now the procedure of searching out individual clips is going to be equal to the intro with only one slight difference. So just double click onto your footage and use this little time marker to move throughout the scene pack. Now once you found a clip that you want to use, we're also going to go back to this bracket and click it once. As you can see, our footage is now cut to the place in time. We're going to go ahead, right click onto the next marker and click go to marker time. As you can see, your time indicator moves and we're now going to press control 
Control, Shift, and D. This will just cut the clip. As you can see, you now have a small dedicated clip for that certain time frame. And we can now go ahead, double click onto the layer again, and continue this process till we have all the clips. So now again, use this little marker, scroll throughout the scene pack till you find the scene you want to use. Then click this little bracket once, right click onto the next marker, click on go to marker time, and now cut it again by pressing Control, Shift, and D. Do this till you have all clips for every beat mark. As you can see, I now search out all scenes I want to use. And next, before we add the actual effects, we still have to do some tweaks to the footage. We're going to start by selecting all the clips at once and then disabling the audio for all of them so that throughout our edit while our song is playing, we don't hear some random background music or noises coming from the actual clips. So just click onto the speaker symbol. And next, we're going to turn on motion blur and frame blending. Go ahead and click that twice. Enabling these two settings will just make our edit smoother. Also, don't forget to turn on the sound for our intro again. And of course, in the intro, we also want to turn on motion blur and frame blending. Now, once that's done and you go ahead and skip through your clips, you might realize that some of them are not in the center of the screen. As you can see right now, half of him is cut off. And fixing this is very important because obviously we want our character to be in the center of the screen at all times. So just go ahead, click onto the layer, press P on your keyboard to bring up the position properties. And because mine is too far left, I'm gonna go ahead to this first value, which is the X value, and increase this value till he's in the center of the screen. Just like that. Go ahead and do this for all the clips that you have. Always make sure the character is nice and centered. Now once all your clips are nice and centered, the last thing we have to do before adding the nice effects is pre-composing all our layers, which will essentially just put them into a separate individual composition. This will just make it way more organized and easier to work with. And to now do that, we're just gonna select the layer we wanna pre-compose, right click onto it, go to pre-compose, select the bottom option, very important, enable this check mark and press okay. Go to the next clip and do the same procedure over and over again till all your clips are pre-composed. And once you pre compose all your clips, it's finally time to get into the juicy part and add some nice effects. And the first one we wanna add is a Twixer responsible for the slow-mo we're gonna put on the clips. And in order to edit, we're just gonna go ahead, open our effects and presets panel and search for Twixter Pro. Go ahead and drag it onto your layer. But wait, if nothing pops up for you when you search Twixter, it's due to you not having the right plugin installed. And if you want to get it for free now, make sure to check the link in the description and join my Discord server. You can get all the plugins for free on there, including overlays, scene packs, whatever you need. Enough yapping, once you apply Twixer to your layer, we're going to go ahead and change some settings within the actual effect. Which first one is going to be the in and out FPS. Just disable this little check mark next to it. And now for the input frame rate, we're going to choose whatever frame rate our scene pack has. And to now find that out, it's really simple. Just click onto your project tab, select your scene pack, right click onto it, go to interpret footage and select main. And now once that's done, this highlighted number right here is your frame rate, your FPS. So now close this window again, go back to your effects control panel and put the same number in here. In my case, 23.976 FPS. And usually that's going to be the same case for you. Next for the image prep, we're going to choose from non to contrast slash edge enhance. The frame interpolation, we're going to put from blend to motion weighted blend and the warping from interverse to interverse with smart blend. Now once that's done, very important, make sure that your time indicator on the timeline is at the exact start of your clip. Now we're going to set a keyframe for the speed percentage, which is currently at 100% and put it up from 100 to 250. This just means that the clip is now playing in 2.5 times the actual speed. Now press U to bring up the keyframes. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see a bit better. And from this first keyframe right here, we're just going to go ahead 5 to 6 frames. And once we're here, we're going to put the speed from 250 down to 60. Once we fill out that value, it's going to automatically create a keyframe for us. And now we're going to do the same thing reverse because we also want the slow-mo to end again at the end of our clip. So go approximately 6 frames before your clip ends. Set another keyframe for the 60. And then go to where your clip ends and put it to 250. And now when you play the clip, it's going to look pretty bad because we're using linear graphs. Graphs are simply a tool that you can use to change the speed in which your animation is playing in, meaning how fast or slow it's going to start or end. And now to change these graphs, we're going to select all the keyframes at once, right click onto them, go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease. Alternatively, you can just press F9 if you're lazy, then go ahead and open a graph editor and it should look something like this. Now the way we're going to make these graphs is fast. So we're going to click onto them and start by dragging this little yellow handle ahead to the left, just like this. Then we're going to go to the one at the top and drag it straight down. Not all the way, just a little bit till it looks roughly like this. Now again, like earlier, we're going to do the same thing reverse at the end. So now click on here and drag this yellow handle in the opposite direction, just like this. I'm try to put it approximately the same like you did before. And then for the top one again, we're just going to drag it straight down about this. Now, once our graph looks like this, we can go ahead, close the graph editor again. And now to apply this effect to all the other clips as well, we're going to go ahead and select all the keyframes at once. Click onto the effect name in the top left to also copy the effect settings we changed earlier. Now, press Ctrl and C on your keyboard to copy them. Go to the beginning, the first frame of your next clip, select the clip and press Ctrl and V to paste them. Now, once that's done, you can press U again to bring up the keyframes. And now, as you can see, they don't fit because our clip is slightly longer than the first one, which is not a problem because now we're just going to select all of them. And while pressing down Alt on our keyboard, we're going to extend them or either shorten 
random, depending on what you need, till they fit the clip. And like this, you will keep the same expect ratio and won't have to do it all manually. Again, do this for all your clips. And once that's done, we're now gonna add the next thing, which are gonna be some smooth zooms. They're just gonna improve the overall look of the edit and bring in some more movement. Because as of now, it looks pretty stiff. And now to make these zooms, of course, we're gonna head to our effects and presets panel again and search for S underscore blur more curves. Drag it onto your layer. And now in my case, I wanna use zoom outs for this edit. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a keyframe at the beginning of our clip for the Z distance effect. Now put this value from 1 down to 0 0.75. And now by pressing up U, you can bring up the keyframes again. As you can see, there's a new keyframe. And now we're gonna go to the end of our clip and set this value back up to 1. Now again, this linear graph is not gonna look good. So to change that, we're gonna select both keyframes again, right click onto them, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now open the graph editor once again. So we're gonna start by putting this first handle up a bit just like this and then extend the second one that's on top. So it's the same direction approximately like this. Now same thing here if we want to apply them to all the clips we're gonna have to go ahead select both of them copy them by pressing ctrl and c then go to the beginning of our next clip and press ctrl and v to paste them. Now press u to bring up the keyframes and as you can see we're gonna have to adjust them again so I'm just gonna zoom in a bit and now by pressing down alt you can just drag them ahead. Do this for all the clips you have and once that's done we're now gonna add the text to our intro. If you don't have a spoken intro you can just skip this step but I'm guessing most of you do. So to now add the text we're gonna go to the top row and select the text tool. Once that's selected we're gonna just click onto our screen and it's gonna create a new text for us. Now once we're in this window we can just type out our text and once that's done you might realize that it does not look good at all. The text is just way too big and it doesn't fit in our screen. So to now change that we can go ahead select the text layer double click onto it select all the text and then open our character panel in the right side. Now the most important settings in here are gonna be the font size and the tracking. What the font size changes is pretty self-explanatory but the tracking just increases or decreases the space between each letter. So I'm gonna put the tracking a bit down so the space between the letters is less and as you can see it already looks a bit better but now because i only want to change the bottom line and make it smaller i'm just gonna select that one by double clicking and then decrease the font size as you can see it now fits the clip and to now change the color of a certain word we just go ahead and select the whole word and then click this little white square once that's done you should see this window open and you can select just any color you want in my case i'm gonna put red i'm gonna press ok and as you can see the word is now red but because we still want to make our text look a bit fancier we're gonna add some effects and we're gonna start by adding deep glow so just go to your effects and presets panel and search for deep glow drag it onto your text layer and start by putting the exposure from 1 down to 0 0.3. Now put the radius from 500 down to 250 and obviously you're gonna have to play around with these settings depending on what text you want, what edit you make and what you think looks best. But next we're gonna add a drop shadow so just go ahead and search for drop shadow, drag it onto the same text layer and I'll put the opacity from 50 up to 100, the distance from 5 to 8 and the softness from 0 to 5. And last but not least I like to add a bevel effect to my text so I'm gonna go ahead and search for bevel, select the bevel alpha effect and drag it very important on top of the deep glow effect. Now put the edge thickness from 2 to 4 and as you can see it now looks a lot better. If you're having trouble syncing the words being spoken to the character, I can give you a small tip. Just click onto the intro, select the layer, and press L twice. This should bring up the waveform, and as you can see, this just represents the audio of the clip. So now every time there's a small break, or maybe a new word starts, you can see it in here. And this will make it a lot easier to put the text accordingly. Now if you want to add a new line of text, just click onto your text layer, cut it by pressing Ctrl, Shift, and D, and then double click onto your text. Select all of it, and now just replace it with whatever your character is saying. Do this for all words in your intro, and once that's done, I'm gonna add some cool animations to make the text fade up. Because obviously, we don't want to have it just appearing out of nowhere. And the one I want to use for this edit is called Slow Fade On. It's a standard integrated with an After Effects. And to edit, we're just going to go ahead to Effects and Presets and search for Slow Fade On. Once you see that, drag it onto your text layer. And now when you press U, you should see that there's two keyframes popping up. Now the first keyframe is going to declare the start of the animation and the second one the end, meaning where your text is fully visible. Now by using the waveform we opened earlier, we can now easily adjust the text to our character speaking face. And to adjust it, now just drag ahead the keyframe. And as you can see, when we play our clip, it now fades hey, up slowly the words. Like now what animation you want to use is up to your own likings. There's loads of integrated one with an after effect. So be a bit creative and take advantage of them. And by the way, if you want to learn how to make this cool text effect, make sure to check out this tutorial I made in the top right corner. Now, obviously, we're going to apply the animation to all our text layers. So go ahead and apply it for all your texts. And once we added all the fade in animations, obviously, we also want to add a fade out animation because we don't want our text to just end. And what I like to use is just normal opacity. So I'm going to go ahead, click on my text layer, and press T to bring up the opacity property. Now go around 10 frames before the clip ends and set a keyframe for the opacity at 100. Now go to the end of the clip and put this value from 100 all the way down to 0. And as you can see, the text is now invisible. And if you play the clip, you can see that it slowly fades out, like which in my opinion looks very good. So now we want to apply this to all the other texts as well. Now I know all this is very confusing and hard, but bear with me because we're almost finished. And the last necessary step is going to be adding a good color correction. Because as you can see, adding a good color correction can increase the quality of your edits immensely. So it's an absolute necessity for every new editor to get themselves a good coloring. It will not only boost the quality of your edits, but also gain you a lot of followers and 
views because it's gonna make an overall good impression and make your edit seem very aesthetic and if you now wonder where you can get such a color correction make sure to check out the first thing in the description because i'm still currently running a huge sale on my shop you can get up to 70 percent off of the presets that i use to make my edits look the best as possible so it's a no-brainer and a good opportunity for every new editor first thing in the description now once all of this is done please keep in mind that it is still your personal edit so be creative and implement whatever you like let it be a cool glitch transition a white flash or a ghost effect if you're looking for any of these tutorials i got you i got all of them on my channel included with a lot of other tutorials but because this is a beginner guide we're gonna keep it easy and simple to follow but without any further yapping let's take a look at our final product hey i don't want to sound like a stalker but i think i know you And if you know practiced a lot and want to see an advanced editing tutorial where I go into detail with all the steps, explain everything step by step, make sure to scroll down right now and smash the like button because if we hit 4,444 likes, I'm going to release that video. It's up in your own hands. And to now export your edit from After Effects, just simply go to the composition tab in the top, select add to render queue, click onto where it says match render settings and for the format, select quick time. Press OK, then select your output, meaning where you want your edit to be saved on your PC and press render. Note that this might take a while depending on how fast your computer works and how long your edit is. And once that's done, congratulations, you just made your first on After Effects edit. And if you now want to learn how to make cool text effects, make sure to check out this tutorial. And please leave a sub on my channel because I have a lot of After Effects tutorials that you might be interested in. Watching them will boost your followers up by 200%. And with all seriousness, I really appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much for sticking by. Have a good rest of your day. Assalamu alaikum and see you next time.